and welcome to the Force for Thought podcast. The only podcast in the galaxy that is dedicated to hating that scout trooper from the Mandalorian that punches Grogu. I'm your host, Luke. I'm Max. And I'm Matt. And this is Force for Thought. I thought we were supposed to pause after we introduced ourselves. I feel like that's where something would go. Yeah. Okay. All right. My mistake. I'll do better next time. So we're here today to talk about our theories for The Mandalorian Season 4 in the aftermath of the finale of Season 3, which was incredible, but that's a conversation for another time. Here we are to look to the horizon, see what we're excited for, what we're nervous about, what we want to see, and what we don't want to see from the next installment of The Mandalorian. So first things first, let's talk about our main characters, Din Djarin and the newly minted Din Grogu. What do we think they're going to be doing in Season 4? Are they coming back at all? If so, what are they going to be doing? Well, they're they're obviously coming back. We know that they're coming back. They've said that they're already um, starting on season four, I think like later next year or something, which is, in my opinion, kind of a shame just because of how season three ended. You're I hoping really they would stay away. Yeah. Or, well, I'm going to back out of my own comment here. There's a, there's a couple different ways that they can go because I feel like season three finale was such a good bookend to Din and Grogu's storyline that if they come back, I don't want them just doing independent contract work for the New Republic. There needs to be something to actually help yeah. motivate them and move them forward. So I would like to see some sort of time jump or some sort of uh, galaxy-changing events happen in Ahsoka that would necessitate Din coming out of retirement, so to speak. I don't think... I, see, I, I, I wish that was going to be the show, but I think in general, Mando is going to either do those side missions with the New Republic, train Din Grogu as well, but I think what it has the opportunity to, opportunity to do is I think it's going to be able to restart the show, right? In the in season one, we get Moff Gideon. We understand that there's like some sort of cloning going on, and I feel like that was the perfect, perfect bookend to that story. So it's like chapter one, right? I mean, all these episodes are chapters, blah, blah, blah. And so I feel like that first book i guess is like is is closed and is done and i feel like it's now like time to start that next chapter that next book um with them kind of settled in their new roles uh i guess as like father and son and also we have like he has now a job and a house and like he's got the full family set up now so i feel like it is time to like go through i wish it was a little bit bigger i say that now but actually I, maybe i don't um but i feel like it I don't think it's going to be this massive big thing. I think he could definitely tie into it. Obviously, we have uh, a movie coming up set in the same era, which I presume will have Din Djarin and Grogu, but... I'm sure it will. Yeah. What movie? The... The Filoni movie? Uh, yeah, the that Filoni nice movie. I feel like... I thought that wasn't going to come out until after season four, though. Oh, it's not going to come out for years. Yeah, yeah. but I assume, like, okay. that they're going to be in it at some Because, like, my other... Yeah, thought, they said they were going to be in it, right? Didn't they say that that was going to be, like, the ending to, like, all the, like, the Mandoverse storylines? Yeah, I, they said it was going to be the finale was it? to okay. the I, could, I feel like there was kind of a weird gray area where I couldn't tell what was, like, fan theory versus, like, what was actually being said there. Because I feel like in the live stream, at least I couldn't figure figure out what was truth from fiction, I guess. Fact from fiction is a better way to say that, I realize. But I think there's also the opportunity for it. I know we've all talked about this forever now. But instead of following Man- Mando and instead of following Grogu, we follow Bo-Katan. Because obviously they set up that story perfectly while kind of setting the sun for uh, Din set up what? Th- that's why I say that there needs to be some sort of time jump. Because yeah. even the events on Mandalore are okay for now like basically they just need to get people back on mandalore and keep rebuilding like i don't think there's much of a story there i mean i think we're gonna see them again i think we're still gonna see bo katan and the armorer um and maybe those two factions uh still have differences later on but right now they seem to be on the same train and mandalore's doing okay so that's why i say like season three it ended like too nicely like something has to change that in ahsoka or something else i agree if there was ever going to be a pivot in the series to Mm -hmm. focus more on bo katan or boba fett or a different mandalorian it would have happened by now yeah and so i think the ship sailed on that and we're going to be with din jarn and din grogu until the series ends do you like sorry go on luke um so you were saying that the you know the story of season one through season three was a very coherent story about Din Djarin and Grogu, like coherent. For, the, for the most part, it followed the same threads. 
I think the only way to start a new chapter with those same characters mm-hmm. is to give Grogu some sort of agency beyond yeah. just baby. I agree. And I don't know if they could do that. I mean, could he start talking? That would be weird. Yeah, he, I agree. Him doing almost anything is like, weird. Teen Groot is a little odd, like going down that route where it's like, oh. I love Teen Groot, but yeah, I don't think it would work with Grogu. No, I agree. I, I Yeah, I'm interested in seeing if they're going to... What was there? Were you gonna say, Max? I feel like you got something no, well, boiling over say, there. I was gonna say that I don't think Grogu needs agency because he's not his own person. Like he always was, just kind of like a, a story mechanism. You but know, he doesn't yeah, have he, to be, he right? was a story mechanism for Din Djarin, and yeah. it was a great one. And the first three seasons are great, but now Din Djarin's story is over, at least as far as being Grogu's yeah. dad. And so I think if they're going to return to those characters, they need to have Grogu be more of a character than just a. Uh, inciting events yeah because i we, we mentioned this in a couple episodes ago and there's nothing wrong with this but he is like the fish out of water and he is obviously our intro to like basically when yeah Grogu the, does the audience artist. pov yes because he, obviously din or dejarn i guess uh is always consistently tells us what's going on where we're going and what the problem is for the audience's perspective but obviously he's saying that to grogu um which is totally fine, but I do agree that I feel like it would be fun. To, it would just be fun to see him in a different capacity. I mean, he has like he's literally gonna he's a literal Mandalorian now as mm-hmm. well. I mean, he's like bathed in the waters, of Mandalore. Um, he has the force. So I feel like there is so much to do with him. But going back to the time jump, I feel like there could be a, a time jump. I just don't think it'll be significant because obviously next time we'll see them. Presumably they've got some missions under their belt, and they've been doing this for a while instead of like from the jump mm-hmm. um so i feel like there will be a slight time jump just like there was between season one and two and two and three do you think um, it'll be a more explicit time jump or the inferred time jump that john favreau says after the i fact think i think it would have to be Luke explicit for one to two years yeah well because especially with mandalore it's like we're mandalore it wouldn't be really fun to see it build up we kind of saw that them get all together and rally themselves so it's like oh it's jump in the i guess maybe five years but even then it's like he's you know grogu's 50 years old Right? Right around? Oh, yeah. It doesn't affect Rogu if you don't want it to. Yeah. And so it's like, what is that time jump until he actually starts aging? What is that like? Yeah. I think the only danger with a time jump is Ahsoka because she's already, yeah. like, canonically 50, 60, and she looks like a 30-year-old. Mm-hmm. And so, well, well, we can talk about this in another podcast, but I think there's a lot of images in the Ahsoka trailer that makes it look like they're going to the, the world between worlds and... There's there's some sort of time traveling to, yeah. aspects to that, right? I so. kind of hope th- I hope that world though specifically stays with Ahsoka and doesn't expand because we're seeing that with the MCU right now with like if the it other expands it gets messy. Yes, it gets messy, yeah. and that's like the one thing I really don't. I mean, obviously we all love Star Wars. We're doing a podcast about it, but like that's something I really. There's so many other uh, time periods to explore. I don't think we need to add in time travel and that whole aspect to the show again yeah it already has a lot going for it but i'm just curious at what is over and what's still to come you know like imagine it's a year down the road and we get the first trailer for the mandalorian season four do you think bo katan is in that trailer do you think she's going to be in the series enough to warrant an appearance in the trailer i think i think besides the direction they went with her this season i feel like her the everyone's been loving her this season right i mean all three of us included oh yes two of us Mm -hmm. yes okay so all three of us included obviously have been loving bo katan like obviously the highlight of this this specific season so i feel like why not ex- why not explore that? I mean, I think um, I I'd like to strike that for the record that the hell out of this specific season was Keller and Beck for me. But go on. <laughs> okay, I mean, I feel like this season in general, I feel like she she has to be in season. I mean, season four in the trailer, I feel like she's going to be a highlight. Um, or in the worst case scenario, she'll be a misdirect for the trailer. Okay, um, okay, but I mean, I, I would love to see more. That's there what I are, would do. There are canonically Fang fighters at the Battle of Exegol mm-hmm. taking place, like you know, thirty years after the Mandalorian, and so. If we see some sort of militarization of the entire Mandalorian army yeah. beyond what we've already seen, I'm all for it. Did they? I'm going to push back a little bit on that and say you might be looking too much into that, though, because I, I'm pretty sure that they also just like took every single ship in the Star Wars canon and just tried to throw it in there. They did, and didn't, obviously at the time they didn't. They weren't, which is very cool. But again, it's like the repercussions now that come after that because we're talking about it still. It wasn't the Razor Crest in there. No, oh, I don't think so. No. No. I thought someone pointed it out like way in the background or something in like one of the stills or something. I mean, way I'm in the sure background, it looks you can like make a it. Twitter comment about how it could be the Razor Crest. There's a I'm thousand sure. ships well, way sure. in the background. That well, I mean, a Razor Crest is a model. It doesn't have to be the same one. I mean, that could be your write-off right there. Like I said, like That's they probably true. just grabbed every single ship in the cannon and threw it in there. Yeah, they because... did. And now they're gonna, you know, retroactively make stories about who those characters are mm-hmm. and what factions showed up and. I think it'd be a good opportunity for and the Mandalorian. I am to here for it. it. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see the Battle of Exegol from Hera's standpoint. Yes. From, mm-hmm. Oh, yes. That's all I want to see. The before or we change topics. Whoever was piloting the ghost at that time. 
Jason may not even be here. Jason was that his name? Yeah, yeah. There's um, is he going to be in this? You know, different different podcast, different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we change topics, though, what I what I don't want to see in the Mandalorian season four is they really only set up two things um, because most things resolved. Uh, but the two things that they set up was a doing independent contract work for mm-hmm. the New Republic, and b um, Grogu's parents. Because there was that yeah. one line, I think it was by the armor, where she said something about Grogu's parents, wherever there may, wherever they yeah. may be, or even if they're still alive, I forget what she said. But she, someone finally made a comment that he yeah. should theoretically have parents somewhere, yeah. and I'm worried that season four is going mm-hmm. to be just like exploring that because then it kind of like, oh, well, you already adopted the kid, you know? Like yeah. I feel like that kind of like starts Backtracks. to undo a little bit. There is this storyline right and almost and in, in a lot of media right it's a good i mean it is a valid story point where i think it takes it from real life where if you don't know who your parents are if you're like i mean right there's so many different like movies and tv shows that do this where like they want to know where they came from they want to know their actual background and i feel like that is like a valid storyline but i get like you just said i think we if he's adopted we we understand this relationship i don't think it's worth going down that route either to, to see. And I agree, that would be a bit yeah, of a Yeah, weird... because what's it going to... It's only going to do one of two things. Either he's going to find his parents and love them and leave Din. Yeah. No one really wants that. That's no, sad. He, already, he just he adopted left, them. Yeah, he already left Luke for Or that. he finds them and they're terrible people and or dead. And then it's like, okay, well, it's a good thing I have Din. And or then it's also like, can't talk. <laughs> yeah. And then, but then again, it's like we're just right back to where we started. So yeah. why even why even go down that? Yeah, it seems to me. Yeah, I can't imagine they'll do that. Just as a story element too, that opens the door for doing that with every single Jedi that was taken as mm-hmm. an infant and doesn't know their birth parents. I'm yeah, not convinced that they're not going to do that though, because they also did the same thing in Kenobi, where he referenced having a brother very casually yes. that never came back around. You don't, th- you don't think he that's just, ever? He just referenced it. I don't think that'll ever come up again. No. The fact that referenced... you, why would they yeah. add that line if that's to it was never a, it come was up an again. emotional beat for his story with Leia. I, I feel like that's a but, that's the writer trying to be like, we need a season two and here's why. <laughs> we already planted the oh, scene. I did, yeah. not, I did not see it at all that way. I, I, re- like, I really like that scene. No, they they really, in my opinion, stuck a wedge in that door yeah. to keep that open. I think if you were to see that in in Mandalorian, I mean, let's go back to what we're talking about. I can see that being a line, a throwaway line. With the writing the season, that sounds like I'm like I'm dissing the writing, but like in comparison to Kenobi, right? Like dialogue-wise, it's a little... Um, I guess I don't know. Kenobi's like a little higher, and so there's I more like, subtext in Kenobi. Yeah, yes, uh, I heard a lot of people describe that about the third season of Mandalorian just being very direct, and I agree with that. Yes, I think yes, exactly. Especially in the beginning of the season, you said you you're basically this entire episode saying everything that I'm saying in three words or less. <laughs> I'm mumbling on for literal minutes. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. We we talked about Din Djarin, Din Grogu, the Mandalorians. Do we think we're going to see the Imperial Remnant more in season four, or if that story will be reserved for the Ahsoka series and any other series that come up? I think we're going to have to see them. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, so <laughs> long as it occurs before um, the Filoni movie, I think, because that's what the Filoni movie is going to be all about, isn't it? Yeah, I assume so. So I, it's I mean, I don't know how Thrawn. the Mandalorian, but well, I think the Ahsoka series will be all about Thrawn and yeah. everything we know about the Imperial Remnant right now mm-hmm. is Brendel Hux, who is First Order, and Captain Pelion, who is Thrawn, and Moff Gideon, who is presumably dead, or at least his story is. So mm-hmm. if they're going to continue the story of the Imperial Remnant anywhere, I think it should be either in a series focused on the rise of the First Order, which may be Mandalorian season four. I'd be there for that. Or it should be in Ahsoka with Thrawn and Captain Pelion. I don't think it'll be Ahsoka. I, w- I actually love that take because that does, instead of having, sorry, going back to, I guess, what season four can be as well, I guess that's kind of what we're talking about in general, but instead of having uh, Din and Grogu being able to go off and do adventures, like side adventures, which I feel like it, it will. I know it can, we kind of keep going back to that. I feel like it'll go back to that episodic kind of serial uh, but it would be fun to see them in the middle of, the rise of the first order and have them co- sort of like, I don't know, kind of coded in this uh, bigger story. Yeah, I would love that. And we also don't know really what the difference between the Imperial Remnant and the rise of the first order is going to be. We There's got to be some heavy overlap, mm-hmm. but canonically, Ray Sloan is the one that leads the Imperials out of the Battle of Jakku into um, the uncharted space. The unknown called, regions. The unknown regions. And... Uh, finds you know snoke and exegol and starts building up the first order and she was notably to me absent from that imperial warlord meeting Mm -hmm. and i wonder if that's because they 
saw her as a book character, didn't care, didn't want to yeah. include her story, or if they're intentionally leaving her out for story elements later. I couldn't tell how that council, how much we should look into that, and how much of it was just cool to see and then hint at. Because I feel like it's a cool breadcrumb, right? But it's it like, is are they cool gonna breadcrumb. It I is. think it's borderline irresponsible for Star Wars in this day and age to put such a cool <laughs> breadcrumb that it's not supposed yes, to be looked like, into. Domino Gleason's brother plays his mm-hmm. father in the show, right? But it's like, I, is he in anything else? Is that just a cool cameo? Like, is, is he, that guy an actor? You mean? Yes. Like, yeah, is that gonna I, carry no any? Like, is that gonna actually have any weight to it? Like, when it comes to being like, oh, like, there's no. I just don't see. I mean, he like definitely could have been. Uh, Brian Gleason is his I dad. I would be he's a great actor. shocked if the Shadow Camp Council doesn't come up let alone make a main appearance in the ahsoka show but wouldn't you yes oh, it'll definitely be yeah. in the uh, main antagonist to the ahsoka show then, well, right. especially with thrawn but i feel like all those characters are going to be really kind of throwaways or side if they really if that was going to be somebody you'd be like oh my god like there's that huge actor right mm-hmm. uh, no i think they're all just going to be general warlords and thrawn's going to unite them all in ahsoka but what i'm wondering yeah. is in terms of the mandalorian the show and the mandalorians their dealings with the Imperial Remnant is pretty contained to Moff Gideon because he led the Knight of a Thousand Tears yeah. and he's the one that stole the Darksaber. Mm-hmm. And now that he's gone, there's not really much of a story for the Mandalorians to keep going with the Imperial Remnant. Well, Ahsoka comes out before, though. So Ahsoka comes back. You know Thrawn's going to come back. He's going to lead the Remnant Imperials out of hiding. No, I, th- I think it's... You think Ahsoka's going to team up with the Mandalorians? To fight the Imperial Remnant, or she's going to team up with the New Republic? Uh, that's not what I'm saying, but I guess I wouldn't be surprised if the Mandalorians made an appearance in the Ahsoka show. No, I just mean by the time it really? comes back around to Mando Season 4, there will be plenty of independent contract work for Din Djarin to do with um, the Imperial Remnants in the uh, Outer Rim or Unknown Regions or whatever it is that's outside of the New Republic's jurisdiction. Yeah, really. I think the Mandalorians and the Imperial Remnant are going to start distancing themselves from each other now that Moff Gideon is gone. I think he was the inciting incident that brought the two of them together and now that he's gone the mandalorians they're not going to be like isolationists mm-hmm. but they're not around in the sequel trilogy at yeah. least as far as anything we've seen yeah. and so i think they're going to start backing away in terms of at least in terms of the imperial remnant story how line. do you how do you feel about kane is left virtually um oh Ilya kane yeah, yeah she's right she's like the biggest loose end that we we didn't see anything Are they Who? yeah that is a big loose end the, the Gideon's uh, the right-hand that, person, the spy, yeah. That flayed Dr. Yeah, Pershing's that's mind. another reason why you know they're going to come back. Yeah. I, also, I strongly disagree with you, Luke. I, I do not think that they're going to be distancing themselves. And I also disagree, I, I also do consider this to be the rise of the First Order. These are the very first steps. They might not call yeah. themselves that right now, but I feel like the Empire ended at Jakku, which would have been before Mandalorian. So I think everything we're seeing is like the 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 infant stages of the First Order. What will I, be. I don't think so. I think there's going to be a distinct First Order, a distinct Empire, and a distinct Thrawn's Imperial Remnant. That, you know, that I could... mean, he may be, it may be the stepping stone from Imperial to First Order, but I don't think Thrawn think will there's... ever say First Order or ever be affiliated. So you don't think there will be any sort of unity within the Imperial Remnant slash First Order until they unite under the First Order banner? Honestly, no. I think in the... I don't think they'll unite under the First Order banner. I think the Filoni movie will see the definitive end of the Imperial Remnant. And then the First Order will be maybe just cherry-picking Brendel Hux or... Did he say that, though? I don't think we're going to see the definitive end of the Imperial Remnant. No, I I think that is absolutely incorrect. Because I think the Imperial Remnant is the very early stages of the First Order. And going back to a comment you made earlier about just ignoring Ray Sloan because she's just a, a, a book character. She was in a trilogy of books so she was like one of the, she was the main pro- antagonist in um the aftermath books mm-hmm. and i don't She's think they are just going to throw that too. away um because we already know and i appreciate that they're getting a lot of source material from the books and canons and they're trying to stay uh true to that uh, uh books and comics um because they brought uh black chrysanthemum into the live action yeah. from comics mm-hmm. and cop vanth was also in one of those mini stories in one of the aftermath books. Mm-hmm. He was he was a character created to fill three pages worth of material, but it happened to be, you know, about Boba Fett's armor. Mm-hmm. So in Mandalorian, when they were like, oh well we need to address how he got his armor back, so we need to create this Cobb Vanth character yeah. that they talked about, it would have been super easy for them to be like, okay, no, that was just like a 
interlude in one of the aftermath books we don't have to stay true to that we can just have the viewers assume that something else happened to this armor and they can do anything that they wanted but they didn't they brought in Cobb Vanth which I'm glad they did because yeah. he was an awesome character I completely agree I am forever grateful for Cobb Vanth you will not find any Cobb, Cobb Vanth slander <laughs> out of my throat here. as long I, as I live I very much love him but I think there's a very big difference between including Cobb Vanth and Black Crescenton who were by your own admission, very minor characters in the books and comics. I mean, Black Crescenton's in it a little bit more, but he's just a Wookiee bounty hunter, and there's not really any story elements with him that needed to be brought into the screen also. But Ray Sloan has a lot of baggage if you want to bring her into canon, into live-action canon, because... But she... that's just all the more reason why they wouldn't disregard her. Luke, or Max, <laughs> both. Let's bring it back to Mandalore in season four, if you like. <laughs> I feel like this is a whole other side. Right, we'll talk about it another like time. We'll, whole, talk right? it another time. Right, we'll, we'll talk about it another time. We'll talk about it when Mandalorian the Mandalorian season four whole, comes out and the Imperial Remnant is all of a sudden not there and everyone's like, oh, where no, did I go? No one saw this coming. That is not going to happen. <laughs> I think it will at least, it, it may be there in terms of Din, Jarn, and Din Grogu's story, but I do think that the Mandalorians and Bo-Katan and Mandalore proper will not be fighting the Imperial Remnant as much as you guys do. <laughs> Did you just make what, up me? Mandalore what? proper? Is that what it's called? Mandalore proper? <laughs> that's yeah. What that's, that's what I call it's it. That's code. hilarious. Mandalore proper. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, All right. well, I forget I mean, what you just said, but I, I'm pretty yeah. sure you were wrong. <laughs> it's like we're going, we were going <laughs> deep on that one. Surface level this ep. Anyway. This will be one for the record books when Mandalorian Season 4 comes out. We'll come back to this. We will. We'll revisit this. I, I feel like I you could just say records, also. <laughs> I don't think record books need to be said. It's kind <laughs> of a, a hat on a hat. I'm an old, I'm an old, <laughs> well, it's I'm one an old for the record books, soul. because he's saying every single one of his predictions will be spot on. Yeah. That will be one for the record books. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm excited to kind of like every person, my words here. Every person in 2014 who posted on the Force Awakens trailer on YouTube that Rey is going to be Palpatine's granddaughter. <laughs> have you seen those? There was like a couple people that called that from the very beginning. I mean, they do have a I consistency will, to do that. So, I mean, I yeah. there's people that I say just think anything. It's funny I will toot my own horn, though, and say that, and bringing it back to The Mandalorian, The Mandalorian Season 1, I forget the exact episode, I want to say 7, but that aired the week before The Rise of Skywalker in 2019. Yes. And that yes. was the first appearance of Force Healing mm -hmm. by Grogu on um, Grief Karga. Yep. And I remember saying before The Rise of Skywalker even came out, if this was in the Rise of Skywalker, people would be furious that they introduced a new Force ability yes. and they would hate it. But because it's Grogu mm -hmm. and it's the Mandalorian and we like it, it's cool. And then the Rise of Skywalker came out and it wasn't even a new Force ability anymore because it was yeah. already in the Mandalorian. Yeah. And everyone hated it with Rey, but they loved it with Grogu. And I ah, I knew that was going to happen. It does, it does make swallowing that pill a lot easier when it's Grogu. Kind of like I, I uh, started to see the memes of people joking about how... Grogu saved Bo-Katan and Din Djarin by doing the exact same thing that Kane and Jarrus died trying to do. <laughs> yes. And it does kind of hurt, but I'm okay with it. It's, it's, it's a funny <laughs> meme. It was a Everyone's big, fine with it. It was, I don't know. I mean, it was an at, -AT hitting a fuel depot. That's bigger than, <laughs> ah, although... Is it? Than a, an Imperial light than cruiser a Star Destroyer? It was a light cruiser. Let's relax. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to edit this part out. Anyway, we're talking about Moff Wait, Gideon. Wait, no, yeah, let's go back. I have to say anyway, because you snapped at me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm snapping for the microphone. Sorry, sorry. You snapped at me. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm leaving this in. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're going back to talk about Mustache Gate, and this is going to be the transition in case we actually do edit this in. Anyway. Anyway, Moff Gideon, here we are talking about whether or not he's going to be the only thing tying the Mandalorians to the Imperial Remnant. He may not even be gone, because yes, he blew up rather definitively we didn't see a body and in star wars we all know no body no confirmed death mm -hmm. but there's also the fact that he did not have a mustache when he always used to have a mustache and his clones in the little tank that mm -hmm. then blew up did not have mustaches either so the possibility exists that only a clone of moff gideon was killed and he is still chilling somewhere ready to come back in season four that's true do you what see do we think of that they didn't blew up <laughs> also did I? I don't know maybe anyway um I, I was thinking a lot about this in general because i feel like um i was a little confused Right in Rise of Skywalker, we saw all, all the Snoke clones, and they all have his imperfections, his burns, his like his caved-in face, right? And those are obviously, I guess, to make it look like him. But like, as we know for clones in general, right, they start off like, quote unquote, perfect, and then kind of get their own personality, their own scars, their own styles in general, right? And so okay. in that line, it makes sense that. He, that that, that uh, Gideon could could have been a clone the, with the version we saw of him. It is a little odd though that he would have. We, we only the first time we see this armor is with a specific clone, and then Gideon's off doing something else. 
With that being said, maybe Kane potentially also is still kind of. I, I feel like she might be also the big bad of season four. Um, but it's like so we ca- we have seen two different versions of clones, right? One, the Snoke one, already cloning with the imperfections, quote unquote imperfections, and then the other one being able to start off uh, exactly like like he was. Potentially no mustache. Like that's the only difference, I guess. Right? Mustache, no mustache. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I I think that theory is a little weak, in, considering just like what we talked about. Um, I mean, also time has passed, right? Like, if we're to believe that Grogu was with Luke for two years in that interview with Favreau, that's the only thing that's like ever really confirmed that, right? Like, no mm-hmm. significant time has passed within yeah, the show. No even implications. No, besides the mustache, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the only yeah, thing that Carga I can point got to. Got a white beard now and new outfit. But <laughs> yeah, do we? Did, did Carga to show not, that time has passed. <laughs> did Carga not have a white beard in the season in season two? I say that he may have had a white beard. Yeah, in I thought he two. did. He definitely didn't in season yeah. one. He is great though. I would love to see more of him. Um, I'd be okay with the current amount or less. Yes. Wait, we're talking with Carga. Sorry, that is uh, you, Carl Weathers. Yes, that is not who I'm talking about. You're right. He does indeed have. Uh, I don't think he has a white beard in season in season two. Um, but yes, I yeah. No one. Sorry, no, no more grief. Carga is okay with me. Let's close that chapter. <laughs> but now we can because he basically is the mayor and he gave uh, Dinjar in a house, so he kind of like owes him one. He is the high magistrate. Yes, I also don't love his outfit. His outfit, his costume this really? season. Really? That's a hot take. Yes, only I think because that's the best thing about his character. See, I think <laughs> always, always a compliment. <laughs> that's a hot take. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, I think it looks very prequel era, which I just don't love that style in general. I like the Galactic Civil War era style where everything's kind of dirty and gritty. And it's basically like you're starting at off white. You're never starting at like pure white, right? Like for mm-hmm. any sort of like besides clone troopers, I guess. But besides like any sort of like. Uh, starship or anything it's always it feels always very uh white to gray um but that's just a personal style preference uh, in general um but uh, yeah I, sorry i got off way off track talking about grief cargo's costume and how it feels very prequely um uh does anybody else want to talk because i feel like I, I can ramble on and go and circle back i'm sure i'll interject with one of you though i honestly have nothing else to say i didn't know how you wanted to end this segment with the editing oh wait do you want to talk about the mustache gate or anything i feel like i'm the only one who said anything about it i thought i talked about and gave my speech my I, I have I want to stay quiet because I don't want to be a negative Nancy about it. I can't but I stay think quiet. a lot. That's <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. No, this no. Is medium. I want. I want to hear you talk about it because I think your take on the mustache is at least more interesting to mine, which is that everyone's putting way too much stock in that. I think so too. I think that's. I mean, realistically, I mean, that's the fun about Star Wars in general, right? Because we can yes. talk anything all can be day. anything until yeah. it's definitively exactly. not. It's all day. We can talk about these little imperfections. We can talk about these little things that we can read into. Realistically, he probably just didn't want to grow a mustache for. Season three. I mean, literally <laughs> three years have Correct. passed since we have seen season two. Mm-hmm. Like so much time has passed. Um, and they said during celebration it takes thirty five days right around to film one episode. So it's I mean it's like a lot of time commitment. He could literally be in another role and basically be like, oh, like yeah, I literally can't have a mustache. I mean, because I mean, look at Henry Cavill with Superman, right? Like, yeah, um, it happens. So I feel like just like there's like that in- there's like that industry side of me that I'm like, oh yeah, it's probably this, and it's like a little more like cynical. But then there's like, that exciting like kid Star Wars fan that I'm like, but it could be. As far as the industry side, yeah. I don't know as much about the industry as you do, but if you say it takes <laughs> 35 days to film one episode, Moff Gideon's only in two episodes. That's 70 days, a little mm-hmm. over two months. How long does it take to grow a mustache? I'm, sh- I'm sure half per a episode, week, but week probably, and a half. Yeah, out of that 35-day shoot. I'd be, I'd be mad if that was what, what the difference was, if it was yeah. just a scheduling thing. I, well, that's, unfortunately, I mean, I'm sure it is a scheduling thing, but I mean, I, w- I would like to think that there is a possibility. In the worst case scenario, it'll hold us all over for like a year and a half to two years. <laughs> Talking about it? Yes, because I'm, and that's like, oh, that's what I'm excited about too. Um, I know we're going long, a uh, little longer, but I still want to talk about uh, Mustache Gate a little bit more. But um, I, I would be very happy if they, if all of this was done with that much intention yeah if they brought on john carlo esposito and they're like oh it's important that you don't have a mustache this season because we're trying to distinguish you from your previous version of yourselves we're going to show a clone of you for two seconds on screen that also doesn't have a mustache yeah just so that you could die and we can bring you back possibly bring you back in the future if we want to by saying oh this was actually a clone we hinted at it with the mustache but i think if it was done with that much intention and forethought there would have been some other um reference More to clues. the mustache yeah yeah someone would have said something i don't know but i think that's the thing too right we were talking about there's not much contact it's kind of very direct right so it's one of those things like the thing um with season four that i'm interested in right like feloni or favreau have already said they r- have written season four scripts favreau? which makes me think that they have an overarching plan of where they left off it doesn't make me think i mean they obviously have one in general I mean, they also know where ahsoka goes too yes exactly so they have 
an overarching plan, whether it's because Ahsoka pushed them into figuring it out or whether they were just like, oh, season three is going to be a little bit more like side quest adventure with a through line, thin through line story so that season four is like the setup. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just ending that chapter and moving on to season four, which is a whole new story. What do you mean by season three was a little bit more adventure of the week with a well i just mean with, with like a small through line well because episode three right we focus on uh pershing dr pershing the whole episode right for basically not, a, not i don't say no payoff right i mean there's obviously a massive payoff with that gideon's doing clones um but like it's basically like we could have seen that almost and be like oh yeah he's doing clones versus a whole episode which i love that episode but like yeah, that me was too. that was one of my favorites it was so cool i mean just to see like the whole city and just to see i mean it was really really rad um but like that's like episode three right and like the first two episodes Obviously, we're kind of getting back on the swing of things. Episode three is kind of a side quest. Episode six is a side quest with Jack Black and Lizzo and and, uh, uh, and Christopher Lloyd. And so we have a lot of side quest episodes this season, I think, in particular or specifically. Do you think it's more side quest episodes than we've seen in seasons one and two? I don't know. I don't know if it, it necessarily does. But I think the fact that we're focusing on Bo-Katan a lot of the season as well, it felt like Din and Grogu took more of a backseat mm-hmm. in, in general, right? So I don't think it was a bad thing. I just think that, like, in general, it didn't feel like as through line story in, ep- in season two it's perfect right we're kind of set up we don't even know luke's gonna come at the end obviously but like it does feel in retrospect be like oh yeah like it would make sense that it would lead to this point where luke skywalker is gonna come on and save the day get on the ship and save the day because it's like oh yeah who else at that time was gonna take on grogu to train him or would know if there's another force sensitive person in that time period presumably luke skywalker would be the, the person to do it presumably right and the fact they were able to do that was amazing, but um, it's kind of getting off track in, in, in general. But I feel like that that was what I mean by more of a through line story. Season one obviously was a little bit more. I mean, that was very isolated and contained, right? It was basically taking place. It felt like on like in like one city, and like obviously Mandalorians were underground and and everything it was about like their uh, uprising a little bit. But season three just feels, um, yeah, it doesn't feel as I mean, the same thing with the the mustache gate. I feel like it would be nice to have him back um, because I feel like. It, he ne- didn't feel like a massive threat. Again, we've always talked about this, is that Mandalorian is basically just a live-action cartoon, which is totally fine. Um, but it would be nice to have more of a, a bigger payoff, because I feel like the him as a threat, even in season one, he's only in, like, what, four episodes total? The entire show? Is he only in two ep- S- Six, two episodes each season. Yeah, so, I mean, like, that is... I mean, Thrawn is only in, what, 16 episodes of Rebels, I think, total? Oh, well, I couldn't tell and you. And yet... He's, I mean, obviously, books and comics, he's a much larger presence. Um, but I feel like there's the opportunity to kind of expand him, even if it is a clone. Uh, but I, I don't know. I I'm guess while, while we're talking about it, just to get my official take on Mustache Gate, I think it is stupid. <laughs> I think that was not a clone. I think it's fun to think about. But if they come back in season four and say that was a clone, I'm going to say that's stupid. But, you know, prove me wrong. That's what I said about Darth Maul with his crab legs once upon a time. You know, and Boba Fett so crawling cool. out of the Sarlacc. And immediately became everyone's favorite part of Rebels. Yeah. It's so cool. Echo being hooked up to a computer after getting blown up. And Rebels clone wars. Also cool. Oh, three. Yeah. They can do it time and again, and I'll love it every time. But as of now, with everything we know, I am thumbs down on Mustache Gate. Yeah, I think so too. I think we're all in agreement, right? Yeah. You, you, you're trying to say quiet. I mean, like, sorry. You're, yeah. I mean, no. Like Luke said, it's a fun thought experiment. It is fun to think about. Maybe they will. They probably won't. I hope they don't. Um. Cool. Is there any anything else we want to do before we transition into the other <laughs> madness or potentially trying to get back on track? I still feel like Kane is super cool. They set her up so well. She'll make an appearance again. Yeah, yeah she'll, she'll definitely be in it more. Because I feel like that does set up the First Order, though. Um, but now she's working. With, she was working with Gideon. And Gideon, um, I guess the last thing for Season 3, do you think it's going to go into Season 4? Mandalorian, Mandalore is clean of the Empire slash First Order, right? Like... Yeah. There's no like no one I don't I think Gideon is acting by himself, right? Nobody everyone heard, heard like inklings that he was doing something on Mandalore, but nobody so no one's going to go check it out, right? Cuz there's all just rumors. So they're cl- they're right. in the clear, right? Okay. And that's what I was trying to say before. Yeah. I think that the Imperial remnant part of the Mandalorian storyline ends with Moff Gideon. Yeah, I think I agree. No. We'll I'm see sorry. we'll, we'll think... see him again. We'll see them again. No, I agree we'll see but them again. When I say I the Mandalorian, with... I mean Mandalore proper, like I said before, not Din Djarin, Din Grogu. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Bo-Katan, the armor, yes, yes. going to Mandalore. I think that the Imperial Remnant is done with that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys I think so. Yeah. On the same I, page. I agree with that. For it's, one second, it is difficult to talk about the Mandalorian as Wait. a show, the Mandalorian as a character, and yes. Mandalore as a, <laughs> as planet, a planet at the yes. same time when they're all different things. Do, do real quick, so just so I get your take backs, is so you think they're going to come back 
in what context? Like in the the, the story overall, not Mandalore. Wait. <laughs> yeah, you talking about the remnants? Yes, yes. I think the remnants are going to make a next appearance in a couple of months when Ahsoka comes out. Something's mm. going to happen in Ahsoka that the Imperial remnants are going to that thing being Thrawn. I think Thrawn's going to come back. He's going to bring the Shadow Council together mm-hmm. under his banner, and he's going to be basically the uh, the leader of all of the Imperial remnants. And he's going to try starting stuff maybe in the outer rim we don't know yeah. but i think that mandalorian who's going to be doing independent contract work is going to be running into them a lot i don't think moff gideon's going to be involved um i don't even know if thrawn's going to be involved maybe they're setting up kane to be the next yeah. um, imperial um remnant baddie f- to be din Djarin's, um antagonist that's what i was thinking yeah but i would be surprised with that yeah i don't think Which, that's happening they're like the How? only what what do you think is going to happen? That Elia K- that Elia Kane is going to be Din Djarin's main oh, antagonist. Oh, that part specifically. I don't, I don't think that'll happen. Well, uh, well I think like, uh, the, the Ron's going to show up and she's going to fall right in line behind him, and she's going to say, "Oh, this is great. Moff yeah. Gideon's gone. I've been well, looking for an Imperial to follow." Uh, I'm, and, sh- I'm sure that is true. Yeah, she'll probably be, try to be his number two, but I still feel like. Yeah, but they're not gonna they're gonna use Thrawn in the Ahsoka. I don't think Thrawn's gonna be the main bad guy in uh, Mando season four. No, he shouldn't. I think there will be an Imperial remnant uh, head. In Mandalorian season mm-hmm. four, and I think it makes sense for that person to be Kane. But you think that Thrawn is going to show up in Ahsoka, unite the Imperial Remnant, tell a story in Ahsoka, and then someone else is going to lead a different Imperial Remnant? No, or... it's the same Imperial Remnant. They're just going to be doing it under Thrawn. Oh no! What? A... No, Real quick, I don't, I don't see that. To get for off, a to get off track and then back what do you on track. going to happen then? I don't. I'll take it. Just maybe, just to prove my point, I'll yeah. exaggerate a little bit. I don't think that Thrawn will ever say the word Mandalorian in Ahsoka. No, that proves my point because he's not <laughs> going to. He's not going to be involved with the Mandal Mandalore or Mandalorian. I don't think he'll say Mandalorian. Refer referring referring to Din Djarin or okay. Mandalore, Bo-Katan Armor. Okay, I agree. I think Thrawn and Din Djarin are on two completely different levels, and I don't think I that they're ever going to cross. That's I agree. Why, How but do you think that the because Thrawn is going think... to unite the Imperial Remnant, not go after Mandalore, and then their show is going to come up? Why would he up... go after Mandalore? You just said that that storyline's I mean, done. They don't yeah, need exactly. to That's Mandalore. what I'm saying. Why do you think he's going to... He's not going to go after Mandalore, and then his second in command will go after Mandalore, just because there's a season four of The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, Din Djarin, all right, we know he's going to be doing independent contract work for the New Republic. They have a bunch of red tape and and whatever, jurisdictions and stuff. I think Thrawn's going to come back. He's going to unite the Imperial Remnant, and then they're going to be doing stuff in Ahsoka that's going to bleed out of Ahsoka, and Din Djarin's going to have to do independent contract work for the New Republic because... Thrawn's uh, remnants are doing the stuff in the Outer Rim. So he's going to so, be doing this, and it's a story, so you know there's going to yeah. have to be some sort of antagonist. It's not just going to be every week a diff- completely different story. They have to have something of a through line. So I think they're going to have some sort of new um, antagonist. They have to have a new antagonist for him unless they bring Moff Gideon back. And I think that antagonist will be someone below Thrawn because I think Thrawn and Din Djarin are going to be running in very different circles. So... Also, real quick, are we not considering that Thrawn potentially? And you guys know the books and comics way better than I do. But is there not a world where Thrawn dies in Ahsoka? Because to me, this feels like the ending, the culmination to Rebels. No, and he's Thrawn just will die. die in the movie. Yeah. That Fal- oh that yes, Fal- I guess I guess that's true. That makes a lot of sense. But I also do feel like if Ahsoka is a mini series, and we're we're talking Mando season. Is Ahsoka four, a mini series? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe. I mean, eight. I'm sure. I thought it was more than eight. I thought it was twelve. That's the. Sh- this is still a miniseries. Oh, I guess what does miniseries mean? A miniseries is just one season. I thought, yeah, multiple seasons. Yeah. I thought I it was going to come back. I, I wouldn't be surprised I'm, if it was just one season. With that being said, I oh. anything can change. White, right? White Lotus was a miniseries, won a bunch of Emmys and Golden Globes, and then became season two and now three, which is also a great show. Um, so it, it can always expand, right? Kenobi, same thing. Who knows? Um, but I feel like there is the – I think oh, – see, now I'm kind of backtracking in my own head, but I feel like – Maybe we're putting too much stake in what Ahsoka can do. Because to me, Ahsoka isn't about Thrawn. I mean, it is about Thrawn. But to me, it's about the conclusion of Rebels and getting Ezra back and getting that whole crew back together. I don't know how much... It, I think... I mean, Thrawn has been gone, right? I mean, that's exactly what Gideon said. And he's been he's been on his own mission because I think he's so filled with rage, right? Like, I don't think... I don't, I'm don't. i not totally sure how much stake we should put in Thrawn in the Ahsoka show in general, and then to tie back to Mandalorian. I think you're right. He'll obviously be the big bad of the movie itself, because I also think Filoni A deserves that to kind of wrap up all of that Rebels, uh, that tie-in. But I feel like all they need is going to be like Ahsoka, right? Set it up, 
Mando season four to set up the movie, kind of like, I don't know, ushering into like A, B, and then C is the movie, right? Kind of those three steps. Um, but I don't know how much, maybe in the background we'll hear some more of his grand plan, but I'm not sure how much he'll actually set up the first order or not. Sorry, it's not set up the first order. Um, I don't know. Now I, by all, now I am backtracking to be like, well, can I, no, because I see I'm fighting with myself now because <laughs> he's like, if he's been off doing his own thing, it's nothing to do with the First Order, right? And it's nothing to do with the Empire, presumably. It's probably just by himself yeah, trying I, to go I, after Ezra, right? Like, I think the Thrawn story will be pretty contained to Thrawn and yeah. not so much the Imperial Remnant. I agree. Excuse me. Oh, no. Not so much the First Order. Okay, either he way. He will unite the Imperial Remnant to do whatever he's been trying to do all this time before, yeah. and that'll be the end of the Imperial Remnant then. So maybe once he eventually dies in the Filoni movie somebody one remaining survivor in the imperial remnant will be like we're just going to go to the unknown regions and start all over and we're going to call ourselves the first order and credits and we'll be like <gasps> i could definitely I, see that happening i mean not exactly like that but to, yes. i think ray sloan would show up in the end credits and say hey we already did this and we want just you to join us oh, that, would be, that would be so cool <laughs> just brendel Hux. um <laughs> yeah i well We've really got your work cut out for you for this editing because we've been talking for an additional 25 minutes now. Correct. This is now a oh second episode. God. About that just five minutes yeah, of talking fine. about Mustache Gate. Should we read? I assume we're cutting the last 15 minutes. Are we editing what I already said back into it or do you want me to? Let's uh, transition and transition. All right. But that's everything we have to say about The Mandalorian Season 4, what it will and what it won't be. But what do you think? Are you more on Team Luke that you think the Imperial Remnant is going to distance itself? Or do you think like Max and Matt that they're going to be intricately involved? Why are you, why are you looping me into this? <laughs> No, no, okay. Matt's on my side. We're Are fine. You, would We're you say fine. you're on my side or Max's side? I don't know. I think there's a, there's a really interesting discussion. I think I was, I was thinking so much of I try to get back on the topic talking about Kane, and no one took the bait and just went back and looped for some of this discussion <laughs> in the years. So I was, I like both. I honestly like both opinions. I haven't thought that much about it. I will now. Um, but I, honestly, I was kind of getting lost and just trying to think of how I can circle back to the main point of this episode. Oh boy, if we were losing Matt, we're, our viewers are screwed. But. <laughs> you weren't losing me. I was just trying to get back on track. I saw Luke basically defect into not being the leader of this episode. I don't think this will uh, be the first time that we start to fall out of uh, out of the prompt, but that's okay. If you if you were able to to stick around and listen to all that and actually follow and pay attention, then you should reach out to us and see what you thought. See if you agree with uh, with myself or with. Uh, luke's ideas i guess if you can even call them that um you can reach out to me i can be found on twitter at maxter jedi you can find me on tiktok at little chili 99 or on twitter at kitfisto blog and i'll have to consolidate those at some point in the future but for now and i'm phil mouski across uh, all social media how well. do you spell that it's film f-i-l-m and then owski o-w-s-k-i okay. phil mouski very nice. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in our next episode.